Hey everybody, today I'm gonna show you how to randomize different variables inside of Storyline. And I'm not talking just about number variables. We're gonna take several different variables from Storyline, randomize it every time you actually load a page, and then from there you could actually make different decisions to go down to certain pathways or something like that. So let's go ahead and dive in. My name is Jeff Bat with Learning Dojo. And let's go ahead and download this project file. You can get to it by going to learningdojo.ninja slash javascript dash snippets, and then you can download this project file. To get to the code that I'm going to be working with, just scroll down all the way down to slide 1.2. On this page, anytime that you're actually looking at variables, this will let you know what variables you need to have in order for this to work. I'm calling them fruit one, fruit two, fruit three, and so forth. You can name them whatever you want, so make sure you keep that in mind. You don't have to have it be fruit. I'm just basically saying, here's all the different possibilities. We're gonna pick a random fruit from these different possibilities. And that way you can just update the values of those fruits inside of Storyline, so we'll talk about that. Inside of Storyline, the way that I'm going to display the fruit is through a variable called random fruit. Even though these different fruits are inside of their own variables, we're gonna randomly choose one of those other variables and then display it here. You can see those variables by going into the variable section and you can see that if I scroll up here, fruit one, fruit two, fruit three, all the way to fruit five are right there. Like I mentioned, you can name these whatever you want. You'll just have to change the names inside of the code and I'll show you where. Now, if you're going to use fruits, you can just keep them as is, but put whatever value that you want inside of those variables. In this case, fruit one is the value of banana. Fruit two is the value of apple. I can change the value of those variables to whatever I want. Storyline does have a way to be able to randomly pick a number. So we could get a random number, but this is a random actual text variable. So we're gonna go in and see, here's all the different possibilities. Here's the random one, which you can do through like a game or you can do through like uh, a random image or something like that. So the learner, every time the learner comes to this course, it's a different image or it's a different game or that takes them down different pathways or something like that. There's my apple, there's peach, pear, and blueberry. And then I also created that random one. So let's go find random fruit, but I don't know what the value of that's going to be yet. So we're just gonna leave that blank. What I need to do is create a JavaScript event when this is clicked on. So I basically clicked on the button and then clicked on add a new trigger. Now from the drop down box, let's go ahead and choose execute JavaScript. So we're gonna come back into the website here and we're just gonna copy that code. And I'm gonna show you where you can change like the fruit names to something else. And if you're not a coder, that's all you have to change really. And I'll show you that you could stop the video at that point. If you are a coder, I'm gonna show you exactly what's happening and we'll break down the code and talk about that. But for now, I'm just gonna go ahead and copy and paste in that code. Then I'm gonna click okay and let's see what happens here. If I preview this, it's going to randomly pick one of those fruits as soon as I click on the button and it will display it inside of that random fruit. I'm gonna click on pick fruit here and there we go, blueberry. I'll click on pick fruit again and you can see that it's peach. Let's do it again and it's peach again. It may be the same value. You could add some code to not have it or remove that value once you've used it. That is a possibility as well. Click that again, there we go, fruit. So that is randomly picking our fruit. So let's go ahead and dive into what is actually happening. If you want to change the names instead of fruit one, fruit two, fruit three, and so forth, you just need to change them here within quotes because it's pulling whatever the variable name is from Storyline here. You just have to change it there. You could leave it as is at that point, or you could change it to be whatever name it is here. If you change it here, you'll also have to change it here as well. That's all you have to do because then it will randomly pick and go from there. So if you're not a coder, you don't want to even understand the code or anything like that, you can leave the video at this point. Just go ahead and change the name there. If you do wanna understand what is actually happening in the code, let's go ahead and talk about that now. In that code, we're grabbing all of the variables and we're placing them inside of their own variables. What we have to do when we're working with JavaScript and Storyline is we have to extract the data from the course and it kind of lives in our own little world. So we have to create our own variables from the course information. And this is the way that you create the variables. So we're creating five different variables. Then what we're doing is we're placing those variables inside of an array. 
An array is a collection of data. It basically starts out, here's the first point. It's like almost like a Excel spreadsheet where you have row, here's the value of row one, here's the value of row two, and so forth. So you just basically say, here is an array. Here are the different cells of data that we're going to be working with. And we're passing in whatever the variable information is just by typing in the variable name. That now creates an array. With it being an array, we can randomly pick a value from one of those points, basically. In here, this function, which a function is a group of code, a group of commands, we're basically saying, okay, we're gonna create another variable called random index, and then we're gonna say math.random times array.length. By adding this to floor, it's gonna give us an equal value. It's not gonna give us a percentage or a point zero zero, whatever it's gonna give us an equal value. Then we are basically returning that. This function hasn't been called yet, but at the end of whatever logic we create, you could do something called a return, and we just pick that random number right there, and we're gonna return that array with that random number. Now what we could do is we could say let random fruit, which is our storyline variable, we're gonna call that function, and we're gonna pass in the fruit array, all the values of the fruit array. It's gonna take that entire array and length of that array, all the different values, and it's gonna get one randomly. We've worked with that in our own little world here. Now we gotta push it back to Storyline. This is called getting, we're getting information from Storyline, and then we're setting information and pushing it back to Storyline. And that's what we're doing. Once we've figured out what the random variable is that we're going to choose in this case, and it's gonna be different every time, we're gonna push it back to storyline with this line of code. That's it. So what you could do is you could set up a bunch of different values inside of storyline, and based on that, you could have a game, and you could have a question pop up like in a layer, depending on whatever value was chosen, so it's in a different order every single time. That's what that code does. Pretty simple explanation of what that code does, and even if you're not going to tweak the code at all besides changing the names, you don't have to, you could just keep that code, copy and paste it in, but then all of the other logic kind of lives inside of Storyline. So based on the code, if it's, you'd have to have some triggers that say, if code is banana, show the banana image or something like that, or change the state of an object or show the layer of banana based on that code. So all of that is done within Storyline. If you like this video, head on over to my YouTube channel, Click that like button as well as subscribe to my channel and hit the bell notification so you get notified of all future videos as they come out. That really helps my channel, allows my channel to continue to grow. While you're there as well, as if you want one of these shirts or if you want a hoodie that's Learning Dojo that also helps support my channel, you can check that out on my YouTube video as well. If you want to check out previous blog posts, you can head on over to my website. This is also where I post all of my blog posts. I also have templates you can download for free as well as courses covering everything from A to Z in Articulate Storyline 360, Adobe Captivate, XAPI Fundamentals, Camtasia, Articulate Rise, Custom SCORM, and HTML5 Video. That's all I have for today, so thanks everyone, and I'll see you next time.